Hello, welcome to the new Vaudeville Review, the show that celebrates life in Waldo County. Made possible with the generous support of Viking Lumber Company, Village Soup, Colonial Plastering, the Belfast Co-op Store, the Colonial Theater, and Al the Webmaster. There's a deer coming your way. <laughs> Not anymore, Ando. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I feel like we've got a little train going along. <laughs> What's the buzz that jingle jangle feeling in my shoes? Girls are juking, boys are jiving, yahoo. You can prance a brand new dance or do the boogaloo. Three inch spikes or combat boots will do. Your laughter signifies the pleasure which we crave. Don't be shy, just do it. Your clapping testifies that you are free and brave. Stay the course, don't lose it. Step right up, pull up a chair, let your cares vacate. Lose your worries if you dare, ease your adult pate. Words, rhymes, and images spread across the page where anyone can see them. Head for the spotlight. Shoot and scoot and poot and cross the stage. Big bull bass a swinging, guitar string along. House band plays those old familiar songs. Snare drum rat a tat tat, banjo plink along. Snare drum plays those favorite songs. Step right up, pull up a chair, let your cares vacate. Lose your worries if you dare, ease your adult pace. What's the buzz that jingle jangles the feeling in my shoes? Says I do in the shoe, one can see them. Snare and dance and dance and dance and do the food and break. How's that going to be a good song? We thought that we bought the wrong shampoo. Scoop a goop a glue in your blue suede shoes at the new new fine hot bills and Thanks. Welcome to a new Vaudeville Review, the show that celebrates life in Waldo County, the center of the universe, as we know it. Um, we've got some great performers for you for tonight. Peter, Jean, and Kristen are here for comic relief. We've got Seth Hintes here for some musical relief, and we've got Elizabeth Garber here for some poetic relief. As many of you know, this is an important week in politics around and we decide to versify those who seek the state's highest office. Each of us has written a haiku about one of the gubernatorial candidates to help you civic-minded people get a clearer picture of for what each stands. <laughs> Philip Morris Napier, the people's hero. Shot by cops at home. Bleepity Esquire lawyers, felons forgiven. Barbara Merrill. 
ambidextrous. <laughs> you can get there from here. By my book! <laughs> <laughs> Pat LaMarche, new health care plan. Join La Green March to the Green to the Blaine House. Bring Main Guard home now. John Baldacci. Stem cell research, yes. Budget deficit, no, no. Merrill says, Mama Mia. <laughs> Chandler Woodcock. No abortions or special rights. Here's intelligent design. Don't spend any money. Bow ties. So um, I can tell we, we've got a lot of uh, Philip Morris Napier fans out there. <laughs> there you go. I mean, the guys made, made politics in Maine pretty fun this last six years. <laughs> right now, we're going to welcome our poet of the month, Elizabeth Garber from Belfast. Thank you for coming out, Elizabeth. And I understand that you are the Poet Laureate of Belfast, Maine. Yeah, it's quite a hoot. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm having such a good time inspiring people to read poetry. And I can go on a walk at 6 in the morning and someone will walk by going, really like this week's poem in the paper. And that's my idea of a good time. Excellent. Exactly. All right. I thought I'm going to read you my political poem. I was inspired by these guys. <laughs> Americans become refugees one at a time. They say most Americans are one major illness away from landing out on the streets, homeless, abandoned, to live an invisible life from their cars. Americans become refugees one at a time. Our right to the pursuit of happiness has allowed us to be hunted down by every corporation, strip mining Americans for our money, our time, our history. Our teens are besieged for enlistment, brainwashed out of wisdom, fattened for the slaughter of innocence, pursued by a hunger so enormous they take razors to their arms to ease the pain. You may wake up and find that Nestle has bought your town's water, or that Monsanto's genetically altered seed has invaded your cornfield. They will sue you for patent violation, and you will lose the case and maybe your family's farm. The hidden sniper waits to pick us off one at a time. Nearly everyone I know can't afford health insurance. Nearly everyone I know doesn't make enough to save for a retirement. We are growing older in a time of precarious balance when a flood of conservative millionaires believe if you don't have money, morally, it's your fault. They are on a mission to strip and destroy Social Security and the health and welfare of the poor so we can feel the pain of deserving our poverty. After going round the world, assassinating every last great hope, turning countries into concentration camps for a cheaper sneaker, they have brought the trained conspirators home to turn on us. The coup was bloodless, masterminded with computers, the vote snatched out of our hands, the numbers manipulated, as easily as spoiled kids stealing grades from the principal's office. We are living at the end of an empire, careening towards collapse, and they loot us like clouds of crows descending on a cornfield, feeding off the top. Do we each hope we will somehow manage to slip through unscathed? Are we Odysseus sailing between the horrifying jaws of Scylla and the sucking vortex of Charbidus, sacrificing his brave companions on the journey home to wash up on the beach alone, weeping beside the wreckage? 
Or will we grasp hands of our companions hard enough so we are not separated in the storm, discovering new ways to discover and strengthen each other as we head into a time that is beyond our knowing? And doing things like this and being together is how we get through the storm. And now I'll get you something. This is a Belfast poem. This is if you walk down Church Street right around now. How to position oneself in regards to the leaf of happiness. Children have been told that if you catch the autumn leaf before it hits the ground, you will receive a month of happiness. They hurdle themselves, leaping into the air, stretching out to reach and grab it before they collapse, giggling into that great mound of rustling happiness. My friend, when walking beside the sea, saw a tree sigh like a mother sinking into a chair after her last child has left home. That tree left, let down all her leaves in 20 minutes, he said. I caught about three years of happiness. And here, he gave me one of the leaves. This morning, after the first early snow, I walk along Church Street, examining the leaves remaining on the trees, wondering how long would I have to wait for that solitary aspen leaf, wavering like a loose tooth ready to give way. I pass the great oaks, fully clothed in their rich brown leaves, knowing they will not relinquish their grief, grip until the last snow of winter. I pass the rare tree still glistening in reds and greens and know it's too vibrant to let go of any of its happiness. Then I pass under a branch and look up to see a tiny almond-shaped golden leaf and a single seed pod luminous against the pearly gray-blue sky. And that solitary still life gives me all the happiness I need. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Often in these confusing times, we are stymied by the issues we face. There seems to be so much gray area, so much nuance, so much moral relativism, that we just end up equivocating all over the place. Dear Abby has her place, and Judge Judy knows the law. Click and clack can tell you when to lose. But for these pesky problems that can creep up right here in Waldo County, a new vaudeville review ask you to please welcome Ask Mona. Dear Mona, I'm writing to ask you for some advice about how to handle Thanksgiving dinner. As a new mom with a new baby, Thanksgiving is being held here. I would be excited, but instead I'm stressed. Should I invite my own father, who has recently re-entered my life after being absent nearly 10 years? There are still tensions between him and myself, him and my stepdad, him and my brothers, him and my mother, him and my, well, you get the idea. Should I risk hard feelings for comfort? Sincerely, hostess without the mostess in Monroe. <laughs> Dear Ring Ding, you know, the thought of being comfortable at Thanksgiving is hilarious. <laughs> you got Uncle Mark, full of gas, complaining about the cold peas, shooting himself up with insulin while having seconds of pumpkin pie. The kids keep kicking around the twins' table there, which is really just an old road sign atop a stack of shoe boxes. Grandma's trying to take pictures of this joyous occasion while everyone's in mid-chew. And really, all the guys are just willing to trade fists for a spot on the couch after the meal. And you trade your middle kid to be able to have a smoke without receiving evil looks from Aunt Louise. Invite him. Hasn't TV taught you anything? Your life sucks compared to those home. The reason for holiday gatherings is to remind us how much we hate each other.
Hmm. <laughs> Dear Mona, my teenage son got suspended last week. He stuck a live chicken into a filing cabinet. The clucking was so loud, it was mistaken for ticking. The whole school was evacuated. How can I reach my boy before innocent pranks become sinister schemes? Dear Wart, when my kids begin their delinquent activities there, I always started by reminding them what worthless bags of ping-pongs their fathers were and express my desire to not have to wind up in Waldo County Superior Court again. <laughs> Beyond that, bribery can be highly effective. <laughs> Dear Mona, the father of my girlfriend's two children is always hanging around the house. My girlfriend insists that he's just screwing in light bulbs and nothing else, but my gut tells me otherwise. Is it unreasonable to insist that he not come over unless I'm there? Sincerely, suspicious and Sears port. <laughs> <laughs> Dear cuckold, <laughs> what kind of man can't trust his woman? A smart one. <laughs> to hell with ground rules about visitation rights. You want hard evidence. And that's where those kids come in handy. First, you want to butter them up with calzones or something, and then start in with the questions. Do mommy and daddy ever leave the room together? What does mommy say about daddy when I'm not there? Once you've got your answers, you can begin plotting revenge. I would go after the girlfriend directly. Uh, do the depravity of Mona's <laughs> advice and impending lawsuit, this segment is being edited for content. <laughs> <laughs> Jealousy is one nasty beast to tame, especially when it's got feet to stand on. <laughs> Believe me, I've been there before. Now, if any member of our audience has a question for Ask Mona, please feel free to write a brief description of your problem and mail it right in. Try not to whine too much. It just gets her going. <laughs> our next guest is a young man I've been listening to play music for quite a while. He has studied cello for years, and we're completely excited to have him with his music with us tonight. Please welcome Seth Yentes. <laughs> What piece are you playing for, Seth? I'm going to play The Swan by Saint Song. Excellent. <laughs>
great. Um, a little fiddle sound. Lovely lilt to fiddle music. Right here in Waldo County, we're blessed with a lot of great acoustic music, and there seems to be a tremendous number of fiddle players. Next weekend, there's an event which presents many of these fiddlers, the Waldo County Fiddler Showcase. It's a great community event. It happens at the Blue Goose, and I think we'll probably be able to fill that place up for the third year in a row. The organizer is local fiddling fanatic Barry Crawford. Would you please stand up for us, Barry? Barry! There he is. Tickets are eight dollars with all proceeds going to the Maiden Fiddlers Camp Scholarship Fund, and I believe the show starts at 6:30. 6, 6 p.m. It's a great time. We have a blast. Thank you. It's next Saturday. It's a week, it's a week from tonight. Okay, so it's time to say good night from this episode of a new Vaudeville Review. Thank you for watching. Tune in next episode to see more skits, to hear a real, wait to hear this, a real live singing dog, and to hear our guest mus musical guest, Sean Cash. Thank you for coming out tonight. Vaudeville Review has been made possible with the generous support of Viking Lumber, Village Soup, Colonial Plaster, the Belfast Co-op Store, the Colonial Theater, and Al, the Webmaster. If you like this program, why not come join us at our regular live broadcast the first Saturday night of each month. For ticket information, location, and other interesting information, visit our website, www.thenewvaudevillereview.com.